destroy my career. You know, yeah. Like, so, and it's funny to them. That's the thing. They thought it was funny. Now they stalk me with cards that were exactly like the chalk of mine that they drove. Um, now it seems like they've saturated the whole uh, area with those cards. And if I mention a card that I like or if I'm looking for a card, then all of a sudden everybody's driving those. Um, they follow me around the U-Haul. They follow me around. Yeah, and, they use uh, all types of chalk cards. Yeah. Yeah, like they want to move, but at the same time, um, they know that I don't have the money to move because I'm unable to work because of what they're doing. So it's Me like uh, they're, they're mimicking the fact that I'm stuck here. Um, they yeah. talk up uh, my ex husband's car, like a car exactly like his. There's lots of people that drive those now. We're talking about, like, I had a Honda Pilot. There were, they were very rare here. There wasn't a lot of them. And now everybody has. Yeah, they think they think it's cool. They think it's cool. They don't have enough power. They don't have enough power to save their own to save the bank from taking their house. They can't even stop the bank from taking their house from them. But they got some. Now they got power because they're stalking you. Right. No, no. 
happening and everybody is the same and the same events are happening in the same chronological order. That's something. No one should be able to be called deemed crazy anymore and institutionalized for this because it is a phenomenon. It is happening everywhere. And people that aren't in communication with people from different continents can say just Jesus, just like the Bible, you know, like uh, they all claim the same thing and but never had any communication. It would be humanly impossible for them to have any communication, but they, they made the same claim. Um, it, and it was established. The Bible is established. It's, a, it, it, it's something. It's a phenomenon. You know, like it doesn't make... Well, it's not a phenomenon. It's not a phenomenon. It's, it's the end times. Um, these yeah. songs were for us. These songs were written for us. Jesus was a targeted individual. He was gangsta. So, and, and so were all of his disciples. So it has been from the beginning of time, uh, and, and at the end of the time, he wrote these psalms, for, these psalms were written for us um, in every sense of the word. Unless you've been through it personally, you cannot, you cannot feel the psalms. You cannot relate to the psalms. You, can't, you can sit in church and read them. But if, if you if you haven't if you haven't experienced this, you can't read the Psalms and know in your heart exactly what they mean. Oh Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Oh God, to whom vengeance belongeth. Show them, show thyself. Lift up thyself, thy judge of the earth. Render a reward to the proud. Lord, how long shall the wicked? How long shall the wicked triumph? You know, um, it goes on and on about, you know, them laying a net for you and laying in wait for you and sharing the same pocketbook. And this is, you know, this is the end times. We couldn't get no closer to the end times. It is. You you just couldn't. It is. I just meant from a human perspective, um, it is mimicking that. What? Yep, no, I'm on the phone. Thing 
or the wrong thing, picking good against evil. I've always been, I've always, always lived a very humble life and picked good against evil. I, I'm very, like, Me too. Um, I, I, I have a sense of love. I yeah, the love for, for, and I'm for any and everybody. I'm the same way. Very Hey, Sasha, I went to, last time I went to a church, they had punk rockers in there with their face painted all up, and they were doing punk rock music on the, at the church, and it looked more like a nightclub, and then they told me, they said, after the punk rock show, uh, why don't you stick around for the television, we're going to be watching some movies, and I didn't even see a Bible out there, and I'm not even religious, and it shocked me. Wow. Yeah, they're doing punk rock music, they, they looked like they were, they looked like, they looked like some sort of heavy metal, you know, heavy metal group. That, that took over the church or something. And, uh, you know, like that. You ever seen that movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space? That's exactly what they... Yeah. That's exactly what oh, they... Yeah. That, that's what they look you know, like. But that's what's happening uh, with a lot of churches. Like, a lot of churches are falling away. They're, they're not following God's word. You know what I mean? They're just doing all this extra stuff. Okay, not... And it has nothing to do with God. Like... No, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, they don't. They don't even believe in God. Yeah, like a lot of those mega churches, they teach the false doctrine. Yeah, they teach the false word, and they're just there for they're they're just there for like you know what I mean for the same and for themselves, and they're not really teaching God's real word, and they have they let a lot of people astray like that. Well, you see, I grew up very Catholic, and I raised my kids in the Catholic church, and I felt. God 
and what you get from his word. You know, so it's it's not the church and what they do, and for me anyway, it's about what I hear. Yeah, and that fulfills me because I remember I like I hit it was after my divorce. I think it, was, it must have been early 2015, and I started melting. I didn't know what was wrong with me, but I was like crying all the time. I didn't know what was going on. And I went to my Catholic church and they, it, it was, there was just a void. Like, they didn't seem to care. And then I went to this Christian church and I, something, yeah. Like, a lot of Catholic churches are sketchy, too. Yeah. But just the word, yeah, you're right. They, they, very much, I mean, it's like the oldest mafia. That's why I tell the kids. But when I went to the Christian church, the stuff that I, I got from them, for one, they were very welcoming. And I didn't feel isolated because I'm like the divorced woman with all the kids that left her husband, right? I was a person. And if people smiled at me and they acknowledged my existence. And I cried and they cared and they tried to help me. And they told me I was their sister. And, and, and things that they said to me, like, uh, Something that I never thought of before, but um, one of one of the women there, she's a dear friend to me now. She said, "You know what? Let Jesus be your husband. Um, let Jesus be your friend." And, and it doesn't sound like much now, or it might not be very valuable to you. But at that time, it was everything for me. It filled me up and gave me the strength. And and going there every weekend gave me the strength to get through the week. So that was just a personal experience that I had um, with Jesus as a Christian, and it wasn't it wasn't the people, but it was just where I found His message. And so I, I don't know, like if you ever want to try a different church, maybe Jamil, but you should never give up because God will never give up on you, and He will He, he might send you. You could go to that same church again, and He might get the message. Oh yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, um, I've been to all kinds of churches and, you know, I've spoken to many different people from different, you know, the three Semitic religions and Buddhism and stuff like all sorts of stuff. I, you know, I, I, I think that, uh, I have my own personal views, like as far as spirituality goes, but, um, and, you know, I'm not against the Bible. I'm not against people believing in Jesus and I'm not against God. I just feel that like, you know, all the religions around the world and all the people and everything, you know, we only, we all have the same God. No matter what. Go in the basement. I agree. Go in the basement. You stink. You no. take a shower. But I, I agree. But I, I was just making a point that, like, the churches now, the people, see, the, a lot of the churches are behind the gang stalking. There's a lot of people who are doing everything backwards th than what the Bible says, and they're going to church presenting themselves as being some sort of community good person, and they believe in Jesus, and in reality, they're filthy scum that stalks people and does all kinds of horrible sick things and they're fucking um, and they're trash and you know they should be you know and it's sad that they're trying to use the word of you know they're trying to hide behind good work the you know good words and wisdom and stuff to mask their crookedness their wickedness i have more respect for people who are openly satanic like if somebody was walking around you know and they're and they have a satanic bible and they say i'm a devil worshiper I have more respect for that person because at least they're being honest about where they're at than somebody who is is wicked and deceitful and they hide behind all these other people pretending like they're some sort of good yeah. person, you know. Yeah. But, if, you know, if you read in the book in the beginning of Revelation, it, it, you know, um, he Jesus talks about each one of those churches and where they went off base. Um, and then, you know, you can see there's only one church that's the true church, and that's the Church of Philadelphia. But, um, yeah, it's, well, it says it in the Bible. But here's the thing. Um, it's not about which church is the true church or basically um, all the churches have lost their way at this point. It talks about it, the, you know, the great falling away and, um, all that's happening and it's really interesting that a lot of the people that kind of stepped out of the churches and recognized that there was something wrong along the way 
um, those a lot of those people are TIs right now, which can't help me but wonder that are they part of the chosen ones? Are they somehow they must be, or they they wouldn't? I mean, why did Jesus' disciples go through the same thing when that's what they held? They held the Holy Spirit, and they were hated for it. And so I think it's so much a spiritual war that we really don't even have to understand. So all we can really do is to stay in God's Word and pray. And I don't really think that we're going to get much out of the churches at these end times for myself personally at this point. I don't see a lot of people getting a lot out of it. I know so many people that have gone to church their whole lives that are really lost. Um, that they fell asleep. You know, when it talks about the state of Latagosia, 90% of it is, is in America right now that are dead asleep. They have been going to church on Sunday, watching the football game and the news every night for their whole lives, and they are watching the TV, and they are asleep, dead asleep. They are not connected. They don't know what's going on. They're lost. Yeah, and the new and, and all this we were talking about the new world order, the new world order that they built that they've been slaving to build is going to end up turning against them. So who was last is going to be first. Just 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 picture that of how who is last is going to be first, and who is first is going to be last. Why? Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, and and some of the some of the people that they use, like you were saying, um, I had a heroin addict that didn't have. She ended. Up, I didn't even know she was on heroin. I was seeing her for a couple of months. I didn't find out until the second month that she was on heroin, and she didn't have a driver's license, and she had a raggedy van, and she didn't even have a license plate on the van, and she, but she was but she ended up being like morally good. Um, she had her ways, but she ended up being an honest person. She was teaching me about the gang stalking, and she was gang stalking me, and I was seeing her. And she was staying over my house and everything, and she was showing me how they sent her th- messages through Facebook, telling her they would give her Walmart cards and tell her what color clothes to wear and stuff, and they would sk- give they would give her a Google Map. Sent, they would send a Google Map to her phone, and uh, the the app map, and they would show her on dots where to go to drive past me when I was out in public. So she didn't know where I was at at all times, but they would show her on her little smartphone where to go at like what intersections to drive through and that would be where I was at and so she, that's how she was following me and then when I was with her in the car they would tell her specific things to say to mimic me through Facebook and they were giving her PayPal stuff PayPal money and they would tell her what gas stations to go to to set up little gang stalking things and she ended up being like better and more honest than than you know even the, than the people with good jobs and all that stuff Well, that, yeah, because the, well, it was, well, look at what happened to Jesus. Jesus was, and if you really read the New Testament, he was walking through the streets, exposing the, cor- yeah. exposing the corruption of the banks and the priest and all that stuff, and he was helping people who were at the bottom, and then they took him and killed him, and after they, and then, and then when they killed him, they said, do you want to kill Jesus or do you want to kill Barnabas? And Barnabas was supposed to be this horrible criminal and all this stuff and the the whole crowd and said in one voice Barnabas they want to let Barnabas go they chose to let Barnabas go instead of Jesus so basically the guy who's do the guy who's trying to help people in the streets and, and, and trying to save people he's the one that ends up getting stalked and killed and 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 but isn't that, right. isn't that what we're going through right now yeah it, they tell the do-gooders yeah that's what they call it. Yeah. 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 Right. You know, like Jesus was in the streets. You know, like if you think about it, he was like in the hood. Like he, that, like that's where he was going, and and. Yeah, that's where, because the original Christians, they were like wanderers. They didn't have any money, you know what I mean? They were like homeless. They were always, they were getting stalked. Like, people were always after them and stuff, and they were, they had to like, like, you know, basically they were on the run. They were like hiding out in places and stuff because everybody was trying to hurt them because they were trying to help people. Well, that's, that's what I'm telling you. It's, 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 it's the beginning of time is the same as the end. Because we're coming to the end now. That's how close we are. Because they only have a little bit of time left, so they're 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 beefing it up and they're doing all that they can do to, to God's chosen ones. And more people are having to make the choice now between making doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. Now they they've already classified us as the do-gooders. So yeah, we're the do-gooders, you know. But now you've got those people that are kind of like in the middle, you know, that have their heads buried in the sand, that don't want to know what's going on. And they're being, they're being put now to be, okay, you're going to do the right thing or you're going to do the wrong thing. You see, the, like I'm saying, the big separation between the wheat and the tear is happening right before our own eyes. We picture... I'm 
sorry, could you say that again? Yeah, they're not. They're not. Some of them might be. You know what? They're they're they they're encouraged. Sometimes in some situations, people are encouraged to do it, or they may be threatened a little bit. But that's rare. In most cases, there's in in, in the, like over ninety percent of the cases, they're just being asked just to do it, and they're agreeing to it and going along with it. They know what they're doing. They know they're stalking they people, and yeah. Yeah, but when the table, but but when the table turns, that's their ass, though. Excuse my language, but right now it's easy for them to do it. Just like in the Holocaust, it was easy for them to break in stores and and beat up old people. And you know, like in Zaxxon House and concentration camp, they used to bring people in there and beat them half to death and leave them there for days and come back and beat them again, and and kill them. They could do that back then because it was easy. But then when Nuremberg came along, that you know those people had to pay for what they did. They got humiliated in front of the world, and they had to get hung. And w- and when the Soviets got them, they got beat all the way back to the gulags. They got they got they got beaten all the way back to the gulags. But they didn't know that was coming. They didn't they didn't know that was coming for them, because. Hello. Yeah. where he was, um, he had walked up to different women 
and he uh, pulls himself off as an FBI agent, and he said, I'm investigating that woman over there, and could you see if you could just snatch her bag off of the stroller, because I believe that child is not hers, and I need to get her ID, and, and that every last person did it. Did you see that? No. It was an experiment. Did you see the experiment where they literally sat somebody at a thing, and they told them, Oh, these electrical shocks aren't really hurting that person, but we need you to give them electrical shocks. And so the person was literally convulsing, and they still did it, and, and 90% of the people did it. No, I like, look at psychological, yeah, look at psychological, look at, just to research a little bit on experiments they've done on average, just average people, you know. See, that's why we're, we're picked in a lot of these programs, too. Is because we're those people that would say, um, get the people. <laughs> but, you know, um, 90% of the people do, they just they just do what they told under authority because we've been so brainwashed. Yeah. Like I yeah. Yeah, yeah, drugging people, drugging people and, and using electronical weapons on people and all this stuff. You know, these people know exactly what they're doing. And, it, yeah, they know, and they're benefiting. They're getting prepaid credit cards and stuff, and, and they're getting paid to stalk people all over the city and do all these horrible things to people. And, you know, word's getting out about this stuff. I mean, 20 years ago, they could hide it. Now everybody's beginning to see what's going on. And I, I, you know, I, I wish I could turn on the news one day and see something like Nuremberg and, and see how, and, you know, they can, the people say, oh, wow, man, you were stalking this person every day and you, you were telling people to use electronical weapons on them and you knew all this was going on and you were doing all this. I want to see what kind of justification they can come up for that, drugging people's food, using weapons on them, stalking them everywhere. I'd like to see, I'd like to see what they, I'd like to see that explained. Yeah. 